hello friends and fashion lovers welcome and welcome back in this video i'll be showing you how to make a bloomer shirt my name is esther in case you're here for the first time please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you like what you say for this tutorial aside from your sewing kit the material you'll be needing are a fabric an elastic and a pull of pants pattern the link will be in the description box this was just a basic pull up trouser pattern which I am folding it so I can use the length I desire. So this is my pattern. I have created a guideline on my pattern paper and that would be my hemline. So I'm going to place my pattern on that hemline. So now I am going to just separate it a bit just to give a little bit of fullness. So bubbles looks cute on children. So the amount you separate it determines the fullness you are going for. So mine is about 3 inches right there and this will include my seaming allowance. Please, this will include my seaming allowance. So my waistband has been folded off. When I drafted this pattern, I included a waistband. But for this tutorial, I'm folding that away because I'll be creating a new waistband. So I just want you to note that the waist of my pants is not totally straight. Is that you could continue and follow the cuff, or you can use a ruler and make it straight. You can do this in a cuff form, or you can do this in a straight form by placing a ruler and making it straight it's totally up to you and it's pretty much the same so now we'll be making a new waistband so i'm using two inches for this new waistband please this two inches is where my elastic is going to sit i'm using a half inch elastic if you are using a one inch elastic you will definitely need more so please note that the elastic determine the amount of band you are going to mark out. So for my half inch, I use two inches. Now for my fold over, because definitely you are going to be folding this over, I am using two inches again because I'm going to be overlocking it. But if you are not going to overlock it, you are going to fold it in. Please use two and a half inches so that the half inch will be for the fold over before you fold again get what I mean so for the down part my hemline I am marking 1.5 inches and this 1.5 inches is for my fold over because I'm satisfied with the length I want so this is just for my fold over so for the side I am going to keep it straight initially it was curved but just take it from that crouch line and just keep it straight this way you don't have to bother about things not matching up so this spreading that i've made the extra three inches i have in the middle include my seaming allowance it include my seaming allowance so i don't need to add extra seaming allowance except on the west line that's if you are not overlocking or using a bias step to finish the waistline, I would encourage you to add additional one centimeter or probably half an inch so that you have a little bit of things to fold over so that you don't encroach into your two inches waistband. So with this, I'm pretty much done. It's just to cut out the pattern. You can fold this when it's come to the waistband because this is how it's going to appear so you want to fold it so that you don't have any shortage or it doesn't look funny when you finally fold it so make sure that you fold it while you're cutting it out so after cutting this out you can go ahead and take out your initial pattern and save that for later use see your pattern is not damaged but you just created a new one out of it so go ahead and label it still know where your grain line is so right here i'm placing it on my fabric so i have right side facing so you want this fabric to be placed mirror image of each other so just go ahead and cut out your pattern please don't forget your grain line your grain line is just straight up there so after cutting it out 
this is just pretty much it so i have two pieces after cutting it out but it's important that you go ahead and notch you know the importance of notches it just helps you to assemble your garments don't worry i'll show you how to stitch this up easily you want to take to your ironing table you know those fold over the ones you're folding behind you're folding to the wrong side you need to fold them and you need to give them a good press my that's why we're pressing it now it's much easier to press now than later when you're stitching it so just press it so whatever measurement you want to confirm just confirm it at that point so this is it i've given it a press and i'm ready to stitch it up so make sure that you have your right side facing you can pin this in place or you just stitch it directly however it's convenient for you go ahead and stitch that crotch line after stitching the crouch line open it and match the inseam so I like to make sure that I match this nicely and make sure everything is properly aligned. You can see the benefits of the guideline. So go ahead and stitch the inseam. So here I have stitched the inseam and I've gone ahead to overlock all my raw edges. So now the pressing that you did initially is going to pair off. You see the pressing I did? It's easy to fold it over. So you just follow the press line and you fold it over as easy as that and you do stem for the west. So you don't have to recalculate it just because you pressed it now it's much easier for you. Now you're going to go ahead and stitch very close to the overlocking if you overlocked it if you have used the bias step to finish it just stitch very close to it. And when you stitch, you are going to leave a bit of an opening. You just need an outlet for your elastic to go through. So just pin it. So if you have pinned your outlet for your elastic to pass through for both legs, go ahead and pin the same for the west line so that my child will be able to identify which is the back and the front of the pant i am going to put an indication there which is just a little bit of ribbon so the child saying the ribbon knows the back of the shorts and the front of the shorts so i'm going to stitch as close to my overlocking stitch as possible so if you had to use a bias step to finish this, which by the way is always very beautiful, just stitch as close to your bias step as possible. So after stitching, don't forget that we left an opening. So I still have an opening right there. And I still have an opening along the west line. That's after stitching, as close to my overlocking stitch as possible so to create a channel for the elastic so you're going to measure your elastic i have i'm using half inch elastic that means i need about three quarter of an inch stitching so that i'll be able to pass my elastic so my elastic channel is going to be about three quarter of an inch right there just because I have half inch elastic. So now from my stitch line, my previous st stitch line that is close to my overlocking stitch, I'm going to stitch three quarter of an inch all round. So this time I'm not leaving space. So you want a situation that if you stick a pin in, it stops at that stitch you just made. So you're stitching it all around. So you're stitching it close and that will form your elastic channel so it's time to thread your elastic you already know how to do this you will have to measure the child's waist you're using the child waist measurement and depending on the stretchiness of your elastic you might want to take out few inches or you might just want to leave it like that depending on the stretchiness of your elastic but always have comfort at the back of your mind when you are making a garment so i'm using a safety pin and i'm going to go ahead and thread my 
elastic with the head of a safety pin. You want to secure the end of your elastic with a pin because you don't want to thread it and it's end up inside and you have to repeat the step all over again. I'm going to thread the elastic both for my waistline and for my pants legs. So after threading it, I'm going to pin and secure that in place so that I can stitch it later and I'm repeating the same for my pants leg. Please if you haven't subscribed, please do well to subscribe to the channel, thank you. And now take to your sewing machine and stitch the elastic stitch and go ahead and close that space that you left and with all those few steps you have a bloma shirt that is very stylish with a pepper west design you can see how it looks it's quite beautiful so if it was helpful don't forget to give me a thumbs up and see you in the next tutorial bye for now